Hello, my name is Eileen Bevins. I am the host for this uh, segment of the Reston African American series. I'd like to introduce you to the show's executive producer and creator, Reverend Laverne Gill. Reverend Gill has lived in Reston for three decades. Reverend Gill's husband, Dr. Tepper Gill, is an internationally known physics and a tenured professor at Howard University. They moved to Reston with their two sons, Dylan and Tepper. Reverend Gill has been interested in preserving the history of African Americans and Africans in the Bible as uh, evidenced by the four books, evidenced in four books that she has written. Reverend Gill, why did you embark upon this project? Thank you, Eileen. You know, I started talking about this some time ago, looking at what it was that African Americans did in Reston, how they enriched the, mm -hmm. the community. Reston is 50 years old, and we celebrate those 50 years this year. But sometimes it gets lost that early on, a number of African Americans came here and started institutions. Um, they started associations. They brought in their uh, fraternity chapters. Um, they started Rest in Black Focus uh, and the Martin Luther King Day celebration. Some of these things have been taken over by other organizations now. But the, the beginning uh, came as a consequence of a number of African Americans coming here and making this home, as you probably know. Reston was one of the first Northern Virginia uh, cities to be open to uh, mixed communities. And it was the intention, I think, uh, and it's, as is written uh, by uh, Robert E. Simon, to have this as a multicultural, um, integrated community, seamlessly so. And I think that was why they were drawn here. And so I want to document what it is that those people have done and how they contributed to the health and the the, the well-being of, of uh, Reston. And so that's what this series is about. It's about people who've done a number of things, the pioneers who came here early on in 1960s, uh, some of the um, those who've gone uh, beyond, and um, we want to remember them. We have a section called Memories. And then, of course, we have um, um, a section for the new generation, the next generation, because there are a number of children of of um, African Americans who've come back and enriched the community or who've gone on to other places. And so we want to share that uh, with the community to just let people know and to document that. Well, you've done quite a bit too because you were a founder of the Reston uh, Work Sunday and it's well known in this area. You were also found of, founder of the National Chronicles. You're the author of five books. In the first, you are the first one to write a book about African Americans, African American women in Congress. Now, how did you go about doing this? Well, as you see, I'm very old, and so when you're old, you do a lot of things. So I started out, um, actually, I started out um, writing the book on African American women in Congress after um, producing a radio program um, on the number of African American women who served in Congress in the 103rd Congress, had a chance to um, interview Barbara Jordan before her death and Shirley Chisholm before her death. Um, I wrote the book, and then after I wrote the book, um, after I did the radio program, I went off to seminary. I got a call, I thought, a call to the ministry, and I was at Princeton Seminary. And when I was there, uh, my agent called and she said, you know, Rutgers wants a book on that radio program you did. And I thought, oh no. I would have given my eye tooth for a book while I was in the secular world, but I was in seminary, and I, you know, I'm well, 46 years old. Book? That was my first book. Okay. So my first book was published when I left seminary. I was 50. I went to seminary when I was 46. Uh, and so that book came out, and um, it's still the only book that chronicles African American women in Congress. Uh, so it's become kind of a classic in that respect. Um, and so when I came out of seminary, uh, I also did a number of books uh, as a consequence of just writing um, about African women in the Bible. And so went ahead and did that. Work Sunday was just an idea that I had. I was interning at United Christian Parish, as you know, 
Um, and um, that summer I was with them and I thought, you know, maybe churches should get together and do something. Just one day of the week, uh, one day of the year, if they could all get together and do something. And that's what we did. Uh, I organized the, the first work Sunday and it is now, I think, in its 17th or 18th year and it's not just um, interdenominational, it's interfaith. Uh, and um, it's been successful because I think it was led by lay people. Uh, and so United Christian Parish is still involved and I'm very excited this year because it's probably the first year I'll be home to actually work with them. Oh, that's great. Now, what do you wish to accomplish in this uh, series? Well, Eileen, I, I, I want to make sure that people know exactly what we're about to do. Um, we are going to showcase artists, as you see behind you. Ray Hart has given us some great artwork, and I want everybody to make sure they look at that as they could, you look at this picture. And um, there's also um, some original music by Bill Cruz, uh, the theme song for this, uh, for this program. And I want people to know exactly what we're doing in this community and what we have done and what I, our children can look forward to and to encourage them to accomplish as much. And so I'm excited and I hope you are. And I, I am hope, very excited. I hope David uh, Jackson and Gloria Durham are excited because they are also our host uh, and they will be hosting the memory section. Uh, and uh, so I'm excited about this. Now, is this your first time producing television? Actually, it's not. I, I lucked out on my first show, and I did a, a, a program called Sex Teens in the 90s, and it won a, a Capital Area Emmy Award nomination. And I did another uh, a program. So this is the first one, I think, that's so serious that uh, I want everybody to look at it. And so as we move forward, I hope that the audience will begin to look forward to this series, Reston's African American Legacy Series. And we're, and we're we're so thankful that we have this opportunity at Reston Community Television 28 to do this. Now, how often will this show appear? We hope every two weeks. Every two weeks. Okay. Now, if someone wants to get in contact with you about this program, how can, would they contact you? You can get in contact with me at lmgill2309 at yahoo.com. Thank you so very much, and I certainly hope you'll enjoy the rest of the show. Welcome back to Reston's African American Legacy Series. It is my pleasure today to introduce my co-host, Minda Ahart, a longtime friend and a pioneer in and of her own right, and also her daughter, Pamela Ahart Stewart, uh, who is the co-owner, along with Beth Greenberg, uh, of a pet care company. And I'm also excited because Pamela will be our host for this segment of the show. Uh, so, Pamela, welcome. Thank you. Beth, welcome. Thank you. And, of course, my dear Minda, welcome. Thank you. It is so good to be here with you and to talk about this dynamic duo over here. <laughs> <laughs> when did they get started like this? Well, we moved, Tom and I moved to Reston in 1970 from, uh, no, actually to Alexandria in 1970. And then we moved to Reston in 1971, mm -hmm. August of 1971. Pam was one year old at the time. Our next door neighbor then moved away and Beth's parents moved in. So they have been friends since they were two years old. Two so, years old. Yeah, so it's, it's been a great family relationship. Uh, we, we found out about Reston uh, when we looked in the paper and saw a black arts festival advertised. So we said, ah, oh, let's check that out. And after that, we moved to Reston, and we were sold on the whole Reston concept. That, I think that story is probably a story that a lot of people have to tell. Indeed. Uh, but today, I want to talk about these young ladies who <laughs> really been, it's amazing that you've been friends that long. It is. And that it you're is. in business together. Yep. Yes. So yes. most people would probably advise you not to go into business with a good friend. <laughs> yeah, that that's true. true. It's true. It, that, but, that was the advice we got when we, when we <laughs> first announced we were starting the business. Mm -hmm. They said, don't go into business with your best friend. So how did you, what kind of business are you in and how did it get started and when did your interest peak in this area? Uh, well, the business started in 98. 
And, you know, Beth being my best friend, and, and to her point of people saying that you should not go to, into business, you know, with your best friend, we balance each other out very well. Mm -hmm. You know, her strengths or my weaknesses and vice versa. Mm -hmm. So we knew we could go into business together. But um, 98 was when we were first introduced to pet sitting. We mm -hmm. both love animals and we both have an entrepreneurial spirit. And so uh, we started it and uh, immediately I came to her with the idea. She loved it, she embraced it. We named the business immediately. What did you name the business? Well, we started out with Best Friends Pet Care because we're best friends and we're going to be offering pet care. And then a few years later, not even a year later yeah. maybe, we found out that the name was already established and so we had to change the name. And that was a bit grueling, but we just quickly called it All Friends Pet Care because we knew we'd be taking care of all different kinds of pets. And so it just worked out perfectly, yeah. So are you a vet or this is something less than, other than being mm -hmm. a veterinarian? It's much, well, it's less. Mm -hmm. uh, we do pet sitting. So we care for pets in their owner's mm -hmm. homes. Mm -hmm. So the pets get to stay at home when the owners travel, where they're comfortable. They have their bed and their toys and their, their favorite treats, mm -hmm. um, and they can stay securely at home, and the owners come home knowing that they're well taken care of. So how many people do you employ that would allow you to take care of so many homes? Well, it's, it's wonderful. I mean, we really hit the wave in 98 mm -hmm. to give pet owners another option other than a kennel or maybe a neighbor. And so um, we started out, it was just the two of us. I think that magic number seven came. We had seven people, then like 15. And <laughs> now we're, we're very thankful to have uh, close to 70 pet sitters now. Mm -hmm. We service all of Northern Virginia. And uh, we really do take great pride in um, just giving people peace of mind when they go away that their pets and their homes are being very well taken care of. Well, you know what's ironic, Minda, is I saw this picture of the two of them oh. when they were little kids <laughs> and they had on these animal outfits for Halloween. Does this start early? It started early. I remember uh, uh, in one of the homes we lived in there was a, a lower level and in one of the rooms, the spare rooms, they had like a little menagerie. <laughs> I mean the the gerbils and the gerbils hamsters and hamsters and, and, and fish yeah. and yeah and so I could see a budding interest in. We had cats at home too, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. but I never knew it would blossom into this. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. And actually, when they announced they were starting, they left a very good job mm -hmm. with uh, I won't mention the company. <laughs> right. Um, and we're going to start our own business. And my, my husband and I and I'm sure Beth's my parents, parents said, yeah. what? <laughs> you are leaving this full-time, You have health insurance job. and everything else, and you're going to do what? <laughs> but we, we said uh, if, if, the, if this is the time to yep. start it, you know, mm -hmm. it, it's the best time yeah. to start it. So they yeah. And we hit a niche. We knew in Reston that there were a lot of pet owners that were busy driving to D.C., driving mm -hmm. to Maryland. And when we heard the, the, the concept of what a pet sitting business was about, we knew that this was a need. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, we, we just hit the ground running. I mean, you know, we started we did with very little marketing. We just mm -hmm. would find pets walking, you know, <laughs> I should say owners walking their dogs. Uh -huh. And it just grew. It just grew and grew. Oh, and and we're just, again, very thankful. That's so great. You know, um, Beth, when um, Pamela got married, mm -hmm. my son Dylan, who knows uh, both of you, said, well, is Beth going to be there? I know she's going to be there. She's Pam's best friend. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, I, <laughs> that's the truth. and I didn't know, but then mm -hmm. I had a chance to meet you, and I can see why. Yeah. Um, and you're newly married. I am newly married. I got married in October. Oh. And so just very happy. And he's a wonderful man who supports, you know, all my dreams and ambitions. And so. Well, is he ready for this show? Because you're going to be the host of this show. He is. He actually would love to be on it. If it was up to him, <laughs> if it was up to him he'd love to be on it. <laughs> and uh, so stay tuned. No, but uh, no, but it, 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 he is, he's a wonderful support. And uh, yeah, I, I just I love him dearly for it. Well, we're looking forward to it. And I know you are, too, because you know your daughter can do anything she says she wants to. Yes, she uh, is excited about new ventures. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure she'll she'll work hard to to make it uh, to make it a success. Thank and you. And our families have been friends, not only the two of them, but our families have been friends. Mm -hmm. yes. So it's, a, it's a, oh, your mother, is, yeah. your mother's. A great lady. We're, we're, we're cheerleaders for them. We're cheerleaders for them. I know that's the them. truth. I know that's Thank the truth. Thank you. Well, as our first guest, yes. I want to share with you a token of our appreciation for coming on to Reston's African American Legacy oh. series. And so, Yulene will give you um, the first token. Oh my! For oh my! For being on this show. Thank you so much. 
Oh, this is beautiful. Oh, yes, thank, thank you. you. Oh, it's beautiful. Has our names and it says Reston's African American Legacy, the Next Generation. This is beautiful. Oh, it is. Thank, thank you so you much. Very well, much. Thank you. Much. And I'm so thoughtful. So I look very forward touching. to this. This is and so thoughtful. Beth, you are a part of our family thank and you. we just look forward to you too. <laughs> thank you. This <laughs> Reston African American <laughs> Legacy <laughs> series is about to take off. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much for joining us. And next, we'll have David Jackson and Gloria Durham uh, looking at the memories of, um, of Leon Myrick, mm -hmm. one of the pioneers in Reston's community. We'll be back. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Memories segment of Reston's African American uh, Legacy Series. I'm Dave Jackson, along with uh, Gloria Durham. Memories will celebrate the contribution of African American Restonians who are no longer with us. Our guest today will reflect on the life and legacy of Leon Myrick, who among other things was one of the founders of the Martin Luther King Junior Cultural Foundation here in, here in Reston. Uh, Gloria, you're a board member of the foundation. Would you like to introduce our guests? Thanks. David, I am delighted to introduce my friend and Leon's wife, Elaine Myrick, of 39 years, and Ben Johnson, one of his closest friends. Welcome to both of you. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Elaine, did you and uh, Leon, when did you and Leon move to Reston? We moved to Reston in 1990. We, what, came, we what, came here from Florida. Okay, and what mm. brought you here? Uh, he had retired from IBM there, and he had got a job with uh, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, and so we moved to this area. Hey, Elaine, uh, you have two sons, as I understand it. Yes. Right. <laughs> Did they grow up here also? No. The oldest one, Kevin, he grew up, uh, he was born and he grew up in uh, Lahnstuhl, Germany. And the second son, David Todd, he grew up in West Milford, New Jersey. Okay. And uh, what do you remember most about <laughs> Leon as a, uh, as a father? As a father, Leon was very caring, a loving father, one who believed that his children could do anything that they set their minds to do. He was always reinforcing the fact that you can do it. Just trust God and you can do whatever it is you have in your heart and desires to do. So Ben, when did you meet Leon? I think I met Leon at uh, Martin Luther King Christian Church about 1991 or two, somewhere in that neighborhood. And we became very close friends. Okay, can you tell us a little about your relationship? Well, we, uh, we were very involved with um, Martin Luther King Christian Church. Uh, we did part of the work of clearing the site over there. We did work trying to set up the, uh, the building that's over there now. Uh, we cut down trees. We went fishing. So we did a number of things together. So we just became very close friends, the families. We went out to eat a lot, um, yes. toured DC. The kids <laughs> became very good friends. And so we've just kept that relationship over the years. Very good. Elaine, I understand that uh, Leon was passionate about the value of education. Was it, uh, was it this passion that, that led to his early involvement in the uh, Martin Luther King uh, Junior Cultural Foundation? Yes, it was. Uh, he wanted to make sure that his children, not only his children, but other children, uh, African-American children, would receive a college education. He knew that that was so important in their upbringing and in what they will do in life. So when he became, he was one of the founding members of the Martin Luther King Christian Foundation. and. Uh, he wasn't there, but he didn't live to see the inception of that foundation. So after his passing in July of 1999, the boys, his sons and I, we decided that we would make a contribution to the foundation 
to support their scholarship fund, giving children an opportunity and some financial help to go to college. Outstanding. Very good. Thank ben, you. Uh, did you work with Leon on the early days of the foundation? Uh, yes, I did. Uh, we worked together for a few years until his passing on that, helping set up the foundation. Um, then once he passed, then I was worked with Elaine and the, the children to set up the scholarship. Okay. So Elaine, did um, did did Leon uh, learn the value of education as a youngster growing up, or or did he? Um, have some experiences in his career that, uh, that drove that, that passion for education. He had a passion as a young man because his father passed before he entered college. And so his mother, once his father passed, his mother had to take a job. And her job was she, was, she worked in a laundry. And so he set out, he was determined that he was going to go to college finish school, do whatever it had to do so that he could make a good living for him and his family. So he, he first he started, his first job was he was in the military. He was in the military for approximately seven to eight years. He resigned from the military and that's when he went with IBM. And he started, he was one of the few people that worked with the personal computer. And so that took us to Boca Raton, Florida. And he worked a number of years there. He retired from IBM, and that's when he became, uh, he worked for the uh, Federal Bureau of Investigation. Uh, ben, what are your best memories uh, with your friendship with Leon? I think um, one of the better memories was one night we decided to go night fishing. Oh. And we went to Solomon's <laughs> Island and um, <laughs> It was about 15 of us on the boat, some of my customers that I worked with. And uh, so we caught probably, uh, I would say in the neighborhood of 100 to 150 fish. Yes. So uh -huh. the, the, the problem was, what were we going to do with all these fish? Uh, but uh, they were croakers and crappies and things like that down at Solomon's Island. So how are we going to get them back? What were we going to do with them? So we split them up, but I still had cool after cool of fish. <laughs> so I talked to Leon the next day. I said, what'd you do with yours? Well, we're going to cook some, we're going to freeze some. So uh, uh, that was one of the better memories. Mm -hmm. right. Some of the other things he did is we were um, working together cutting trees over there to clean off the current site for the, uh, the church. And uh, so we worked together to cut down trees and bring, we had, and I still have some of the wood from that uh, <laughs> over there. Okay. I never burned. Okay. So uh, those are some of the things that we did together. Uh, ben, our, uh, our young people are, are faced with uh, a number of distractions uh, these days that we didn't have as we were growing up. Uh, what advice do you think Leon would offer to uh, the youngsters these days uh, if he were here? Well, I think he would probably tell them to, they need to get refocused. Because right now, uh, you're right, they do have a lot of distractions that, the type of distractions that we probably didn't have when we were growing up. And uh, I think he would just say, you know, be focused, decide what you want to do, and go for it. Because right now, a lot of our kids, they don't have any direction. So they need to talk to somebody to try to figure out what's out here. They what they see on the TV and other places and what's currently happening uh, is not reality. I mean, if you want something, then you got to work for it to try to make it happen. And, and along with that comes a good education. So if you don't have an education, the chances of achieving some of that are it's just impo it's almost impossible. Okay. Uh, this has been fantastic. We want to thank both of you for your memories of Leon Myrick, an African-American pioneer and a major contributor to exchanging quality of life in Reston. And we appreciate it. We thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Elaine, we would, uh, before we finish, we'd like to uh, present you with a plaque in honor of uh, Leon's <laughs> service oh and commitment to, uh, to the community. Oh, thank you. <laughs>
Oh, thank you so much, Eulene. How beautiful. And until next time, I'm Gloria Durham along with David Jackson. Thank you for joining us for Reston's African American Legacy Series. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.